Well, I am quite confident that we will be able to form a government, a government that will be uh, led by Pedro Sánchez, the current president, prime minister of, of Spain. And uh, because I think that the Spanish voters were very clear and very strong and loud when they said they didn't want a government led by the right and ultra-right party Vox in Spain. And this message needs to now put in practice in, in a government that continues and, and consolidates progress that we've made during the last five years. Yeah, but you know, there has been uh, a certain amount of backlash from the electorate because uh, the Prime Minister is seen to be giving concessions to separatist parties who have quite an extreme position on, on certain areas. What sort of precedent does that set for the future and what does it mean about the longevity of being able to govern if this coalition actually does meet the threshold by November? When we took office back in 2018, Catalonia, so the independentist movement and the tension on the streets in Catalonia was one of the top problems for Spanish society. You know, in every international interview I had, they asked me, so what's going on in Catalonia? What's going to happen? For the past five years, we have led a, po a policy of bringing back respect and living together in Catalonia and of course protecting the integrity of Spain, you know. So I would say people have seen how we do things through respect, through dialogue, uh, through listening to each other, and that is working well. So uh, I, I think that it's quite clear this is the policy we need and the track we need to be on, and not going back to 2017 and conflict between uh, a government in Spain that was not ready to engage at all and the independentist moving going, you know, like, a, you know, without breaks. So no chance say. of another referendum. Them. Well, we, we're always yeah. uh, acted within the Constitution. We've always respected uh, the Constitution. I mean, uh, the, the party that's leading the government in Spain, the Socialist Party, is a national party that has defended the integrity of the country, you know, for 180 and, and 40 years of history. So, no, I, I think that what's important is not to go back to the situation we had in 2017, which was so bad from the economic point of view and also from the social point of view to view in Spain. Minister, I want to focus on economic matters, but before I get there, I just would like to clarify, when do you expect to hear whether you obtain the presidency of the AIB? Well, we have until end of the year to make that decision because the mandate finishes end of the year. To be very frank with you, these days I'm really focusing on other matters. I'm very focused on my role as IMFC chair uh, during the, the annual meetings of the uh, International Monetary Fund. I'm also very focused on my job as vice president of the government in Spain and finance and, and economy minister. So I... Um, could still I, take a while then. Sorry? Could still take a while. Yes, I mean, it could be any moment, but it could be uh, towards the end of the year. Year, you know, and, and uh, it would be fine because the job should start 1st of January 2024. Let's see what the ministers will decide then. Um, let's focus on the economic outlook for the Eurozone. We were mo speaking moments ago to Paolo Gentiloni from the Commission, and he was stressing that he's hopeful that the Spanish presidency will actually manage to reach an agreement on the fiscal rules by the end of the year. How likely is that? Well, it's challenging. You know, whatever we're discussing these this is very challenging. We live in a very, in a very complex world. Uh, but we're working very intensely with all member states and I'm confident because I see they're engaging in a constructive manner mm -hmm. and from the perspective of the Spanish presidency we will do our utmost to have an agreement. I think it's extremely important that we have rules which are fit for purpose and that there is also clarity vis-a-vis -vis financial markets uh, with the determination of uh, European countries to follow the path of fiscal responsibility and at the same time make this compatible with strong growth, job creation and the necessary investments for the twin green and digital transitions.